The platinum print begins with a chemical mixture being brushed onto a sheet of paper until it's evenly absorbed. So the paper's quality is inseparable from the image itself. It has to be made from cotton. It has to be able to withstand the highly acidic salt emulsion, the chemical processing, and then a 20 minute wash. In Mark Kalansky's wonderful book, Paper, he wrote, paper manufacturers have always looked for a cheaper way to make paper and it's never an improvement. Uh, anybody who's been making platinum prints since the 1990s can attest to that. The cotton papers being produced today aren't nearly as strong as they once were. And when they're wet, they tear much more easily. The solution that many platinum printers came up with was window screening, stretched tightly over a frame. It would seem like a good idea. This is a drying rack, but imagine it's half this size. See, it would fit in very nicely into this tray. And when you lay the print on top, you'd be able to handle it and move it without ever having to lift up the corners and taking the chance of tearing it. There are a number of problems with working with this frame. But the worst one is, there's a tensile bond that's created between the wet print and the wet screen. And you're more likely to tear the print separated from the screen than you are picking it up out of the tray with a pair of tongs. There wasn't a single printer who didn't give up trying to make it work faster than it took them to make it in the first place. Layup bond is very thin, but the paper's fibers have an unusually tight weave. Because it's so thin, the image is noticeably sharper than watercolor papers. I've always preferred it. When the paper's dry, it's amazing how strong it is. When I started making bigger prints, the paper would be bigger, but not any thicker. I had to find a solution to the paper's vulnerability when it was wet, and I knew a frame was not the answer. So I started at the beginning. Fiberglass screening is the best material to support a print. It's strong, light, and fiberglass glass is inert. It's not chemically reactive. Obviously this was too big. The screen had to fit across the bottom of the tray. So I cut a piece that wasn't as long, but quite a bit wider. Then it hit me. The frame was the only problem. It was too big and inflexible. If the screen was the only thing needed to support the print, then only the screen should be inside the tray. All you needed were some plastic rods and high quality duct tape to secure the screening to the rods. The screening should be just slightly longer than the width and the height of the trays. Did you notice how the rods are, are longer? That way it keeps the, straight, the screening in place but the rods don't fall in. Platinum print is stunning and unsurpassed by other printing processes, but it's iron that makes platinum and palladium sensitive to ultraviolet light. Iron in the form of FE3 makes this printing process possible. Platinum and palladium are very expensive, so why would you waste your time and money using inferior or unstable ferric oxalate? You're adding a variable to the chemistry if you do. Foster's formula is pure FE3. It is pure ferric oxalate. It is the most stable and effective ferric oxalate ever made. If you want Foster's ferric oxalate, I've got it. It's available in 20 and 28% solution, and I have potassium chlorate in 1% solution available as well. To order it, go to kurtrichter.com slash about.